This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it loud I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe And keep on looking For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, keep on looking, looking to you I'll fix my, I'll fix my eyes, eyes on you trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And last week we learned about Saul, who met Jesus in a bright light on the road to Damascus when he was on his way to arrest Christians. But he put his faith in Jesus instead, and because of that, everything that he saw changed. He didn't see it as Jesus' enemy anymore, he saw it as Jesus' friend. So today we're talking about fear, and we're going to hear the rest of Saul's story. But first we have a quick game. I'm going to give you the scientific name of a fear, and you tell me which of these two pictures you think you think it is, all right? The first one is a maxophobia. A maxophobia, is it a fear of riding in cars, or is it a fear of people named Max? Fear of riding in cars, right. All right, the next one, megalophobia. Megalophobia, is it, the picture's here for you, a fear of hamburgers or a fear of large things like elephants and horses? Megalophobia. A fear of, I did it wrong. A fear of large things. All right. Okay, two more. They're a little harder. All right. The next one. Catoptrophobia. Can you say that with me? Catoptrophobia. A fear of teddy bears or a fear of mirrors? A fear of mirrors. All right. And the last one, it's hard to say and it's hard to guess. This is the trickiest. Ready? Kianophobia. Kianophobia. Snow or clocks? Which do you think you're afraid of if you have kianophobia? 
It's snow. Did I put it wrong? Snow. All right. In today's story, we're going to learn what we should do when we are afraid. Erica here. I'm super excited for today because all week I've been working on something really cool and I haven't told anyone about it yet. So it's basically top secret. Top secret! I really want to tell you guys about it. So I'm just going to have faith that you won't spoil the secret. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. You see, ever since I first heard the story of Saul, also known as Paul, because Paul and Saul are the same person, they're Saul, and how he couldn't see for three whole days after he met Jesus in a bright light on the road to Damascus, i had been thinking about what I would do if I couldn't see. It's pretty hard to fathom what that would be like. <sighs> so, I realized that if I couldn't focus with my eyes, I would want to focus with my other senses. So, I invented, you ready for this? Supersonic hearing helpers! Oh. Ooh. Are they cool? They, ma ah, they magnify sounds like crazy. So that's why I'm whispering. Because even just a whisper basically sounds like I'm shouting at the top of my lungs. Yesterday, when I put them on for the first time, it actually kind of hurt my ears because I was hearing everything. And I mean everything. Like the squirrels across the street. And the neighbors three houses down. Joe, we're out of cereal. We are out of cereal. We need more cereal, Joe. But neither of those compared to the fiesta themed birthday party that was happening on the other side of town. I have been craving cake ever since. Oh, ah, sorry, I, I couldn't keep listening to myself shout like that. Anyway, no worries. I simply grabbed a few advanced technological essentials. Ta-da! I soundproof the lab! So we are good to go! And speaking of go, we gotta get going on the story today. Time to hear what happened to Saul after he lost his sight. <laughs> See you guys back in a jiffy. Oh, it's really dark. Ooh, it's really dark. Can we, can we have a nightlight or something? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter nine, verses 10 through 31. Ananias, a believer in the city of Damascus, paced the floor of his room. What will we do, Lord? Several days before, the Jesus followers in Damascus had received terrible news. Saul of Tarsus is on his way. He has permission from the high priest to arrest anyone who follows the way of Jesus and take them to Jerusalem. Ananias shivered as he stared at his door. Why haven't we heard anything yet? He knew that at any moment, guards could knock on his door. A voice could shout out his name. Ananias. <sighs> Ananias had nearly jumped out of his skin. And then he quickly realized that the voice hadn't come from outside. Um, it hadn't come from inside either. There was only one person it could be. Yes, Lord? Yep, Ananias knew that this was a vision from God. So he took a deep breath and waited for what the Lord had to say. 
Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. <gasps> Ananias gasped in shock. God wanted him to seek out his enemy? Saul is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man come and place his hands on him so he could see again. That man's name is Ananias. Ah, a million thoughts tumbled through Ananias' head. At last, he found his voice. I've heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. It must have seemed like a home run argument to Ananias, but God responded. Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. Uh, I, well, okay, here goes. So Ananias grabbed his cloak and hurried through the dusty city. But as he finally reached Straight Street, his steps slowed. He forced himself to breathe evenly as he approached the home of Judas. Help me, Jesus. Give me the words to say. Ananias stood in front of the door for a long moment, gathering courage. Then he knocked. Boom, boom, boom. What do you want? Ananias shared his vision. As Judas led Ananias through the house, Judas explained, Saul won't eat or drink anything, not since they led him here three days ago. Ananias peered into the back room. A man was kneeling there, his hands knotted in prayer. And even though the man's eyes were open, they didn't focus on anything. Who's there? Before he could lose his nerve, Ananias went straight to Saul and put his hands on Saul's shoulders. Brother Saul, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. As Saul blinked in surprise, something like scales dropped from his eyes. I, I, my eyes, I can see. Saul leapt to his feet and faced Ananias. I need to be baptized this instant. Now Saul, also known as Paul, had always been relentless in his quest to wipe out the believers. But now that he himself had met Jesus, he was equally determined to share the good news. Within days, he started preaching at Jewish synagogues. Jesus is the Son of God. Is it Saul the man who caused great trouble in Jerusalem for those who worship Jesus? Hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners? Though Saul now believed in Jesus, he still had much to learn, and he wanted to discover all the answers himself with God's help. So he spent several years studying the scriptures, and after that time, he came back teaching and preaching about Jesus as fiery as ever. Jesus is the Messiah. He fulfills every promise in scripture. The Jews in Damascus and even the governor of the city uh, were angry at all the um, upset Saul was causing. Time for him to uh, sleep with the fishes, shall we say? They made plans to capture and kill Saul, but Saul and his friends discovered the plot. It appears they've even guarded the gates. That leaves the windows. Saul's friends led him to a home built into the city wall. When it was dark, they brought out a large basket. You gotta be kidding me. You really wanna try the gates? Saul stepped into the container and his friends lowered him out the window and down the wall on a rope. Never thought I'd end up as a basket case. <sighs> Once safely out of Damascus, Saul set out for Jerusalem. Home sweet home. When he arrived in Jerusalem, Saul immediately tried to join the group of believers there, but they were afraid of him at first. One man, Barnabas, had already heard Saul's story. Cheer up, man. I know you're the real deal. Let me take you to the apostles. So Barnabas did exactly as he promised. He took Saul to Peter and James and the other leaders of the early church and told them the whole story. So Saul stayed with the believers in Jerusalem and preached there just as boldly as he'd done in Damascus. And once again, a group of Jews became upset with him. Someone send that man to sleep with the fishes. 
But once again, the believers helped Saul escape. This time he went back to his hometown of Tarsus to wait for God's next directions. In the meantime, the group of believers in Judea and Samaria continued to grow through the power of God's Spirit. Maybe this wasn't the best long-term solution. Luckily, I was awake for today's story. It was out of sight. Oh, here we go again. <sighs> Saul couldn't see for three days. I bet he was so scared. And Ananias too. God wanted Ananias to help a man that wanted to throw Ananias in prison. But Ananias faced his fears and Saul could see again. <laughs> Except now he could also see the truth. Jesus was the Son of God, Israel's long-awaited Messiah, the Savior of the world! When Saul became a believer and got filled with the Holy Spirit, he was completely changed. The Holy Spirit gave him courage and he began teaching everyone the truth about Jesus. Even when people wanted to arrest Saul for talking about Jesus, he still bravely told everyone he could about the Son of God. And lots of people began following Jesus because of Saul. It's like they were wearing supersonic hearing helpers and could hear everything Jesus was telling them through Saul! Wow! Oh, 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 too loud. Okay. <laughs> so, when you put your faith in Jesus and decide to follow him, he promises to always be with you. He gives you the Holy Spirit to help you in all sorts of different ways. And even though you can't see God, he can help you feel confident enough to try something new or brave enough to tell the truth or strong enough to be kind to someone who maybe hasn't been so kind to you. He can help you face your fears. That's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. <laughs> I think I need to uh, face a fear myself. <laughs> the fear of too much sound. These pillows just aren't working for me. Ah! Dare. Seriously? There's a rod of cereal again! Have you ever heard of buying in bulk? I don't know what you think, but I think the book of Acts is one of the coolest books in the Bible. It's full of story after story of the new Christians, of the new church, and their faith. And today's story about Ananias helping Saul, when he was blind, even though Ananias was afraid, it's just amazing. Ananias put his faith in God because God is faithful, and he had a plan for Saul. Ananias and Barnabas trusted God even when they were afraid, and they could do that because when we put our faith in Jesus, he sends the Holy Spirit to live with us, and he gives us power. Paul, Saul, whose name was changed to Paul later, wrote about this in 2 Timothy um, 1.7. He says, God gave us his spirit. And the Spirit doesn't make us weak or fearful. Instead, the Spirit gives us power and love. He helps us control ourselves. In your activity bags, there's an orange paper that has an experiment on it that we're going to do real quick. You can do it with us. You just need pepper and soap and water in a dish. It's all on the paper there if you want to do it later. But we're going to see a, a visual of how the Holy Spirit helps us when we're afraid. For today's visual aid, we have Kaylin here to help us. All you need is some pepper, some soap, some water, and then a small plate or a small bowl, and maybe a napkin. First, pour your water in the plate or bowl. You don't need a lot, that's good. And then you wanna shake your pepper on top so it's nice and covered. So you can see it really well. Try not to sneeze. All right, that looks good to me, Kay. Okay, if you touch the pepper with your finger, it does nothing, nothing really happens. So you can cancel the wipe your finger off and get some soap on it. You don't need a lot of soap, promise. All right, now I'm gonna zoom in here. All right, now gently touch the top of the pepper with your finger. Did you see that? Isn't that cool? So the pepper represents our fear and the soap represents the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit makes our fears flee just like the pepper fled from the soap. All right. 
So when you're afraid, like Ananias was, talk to God about it, just like Ananias did. He, he didn't run away. He talked to God. It's okay to tell God that you're afraid. God already knows you're afraid, but he needs you to acknowledge that for yourself. So tell God you're afraid. When you're afraid, like the church leaders were, then you can listen to wise people of faith like they did with Barnabas. And Ananias and Barnabas faced their fears and the fears of others to help Saul, who became Paul and did amazing things. Paul wrote at least 13 books in our Bible. He led the way for the gospel to be preached to non-Jews, which like me, and he took the gospel all the way to the emperor of Rome. He couldn't have done those things without Ananias and Barnabas and the church leaders all helping him. What are you afraid of? What amazing, wonderful thing can you not do because you're afraid? When you're afraid, pray and give your fear to God. Ask people of faith around you to help you. And read your Bible. Remember, it's so important to read your Bible because you can learn about all these people behind me. These are our, these are our story pictures from the year. All the people in the Bible who had faith in God and saw him answer their prayers and give them courage. Who remembers our verse? Our excellent, excellent verse. All right, ready? Faith is being sure of what we hope for. Faith is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you again for the kids who watched today. I pray that they will read their Bibles, that they will look to you when they're afraid, and that they will put their trust and faith in your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Don't forget to pick up your bags on Sundays, and if you don't come, mom and dad can pick it up, grandma and grandpa, your neighbor, your older brother or sister, they can pick it up for you if you don't come, so you don't miss out on the, um, the devotions and the candy and the toys. <laughs> Just don't forget your bags, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.